most dangerous places where you should never swim. Number 1. Lake Karachay Located in Russia, Lake Karachay is the most polluted place on Earth. The water here is so contaminated with radiation that it could kill you within an hour. Number 2. Lake Victoria It's the largest lake in Africa. Each year 5,000 people die here because the lake has its own isolated weather system and it can go from sunny and bright to stormy without any war. She murdered her mother on Facebook Live moments after this video was taken. What makes this case even more tragic is that this woman showed plenty of signs that her mental health was declining. It all started on January 7th, 2024, when 28-year-old Donatson Beltran was arrested after failing to stop during a traffic stop. The next morning, Donatson was released and her mother, 55-year-old Olivia Beltran, arrived to the police station to speak to an officer and see how she can retrieve Donance's car because it was impounded. While the mother spoke with the officer, Donanson began recording herself and if you look closely, she's actually holding a pocket knife right in front of the officer. You know, the sticker with the, little, with the little eyes? That was really cute. I like that, I like that detail. So I'll tell you. So, so I'm going to need the wheels. And then, that way. And then. So the officer doesn't even realize that she's waving this knife around and what's sad is that had he noticed this, maybe Olivia would still be alive right now. Olivia and Donansen then drove to her apartment and this is when Donansen took out her phone, started recording this and then posted it on TikTok. During this video, Donansen is making no sense at all and she's actually hurting her mother's ear and her mother is telling her to stop. And then she tells her mother that she's going to make sure that she sleeps tonight forever but not just that she also tells her mother that she's going to be her first but hours after these videos were taken Donanson brutally murdered her mother while on Facebook live in her apartment balcony it was said that many people including close friends and family saw the lie but it was immediately taken down Donanson was charged and she pled not guilty by reason of insanity you won't believe this crazy discovery about 9-11 everybody knows that on September 11th 2001 the Twin Towers in New York City were struck by two airplanes and both towers collapsed to the ground. Thousands of people were killed and the damage was devastating. However, in 2010, workers excavating the crash site discovered something very strange. They discovered the remains of a 30-foot-long wooden boat that was buried underneath the 9-11 rubble. The question soon became, how did a shipwreck end up 22 feet beneath the World Trade Center? Scientists began to research and analyze the wood that was found from the ship. And in 2014, they were able to conclude that the ship was built around the 1770s, around the same time as the Declaration of Independence. And it's believed that the ship was sailing through Lower Manhattan where it sunk. And as New York City began to grow, the city of Manhattan expanded right over the top of the ship. Adorable Animals That Can Kill You Part 3 The Poison Dart Frog If you ever see a vibrant, colorful frog in the wild, especially in a warm climate, even though it's pretty, don't get close to it. Incredibly tiny in size, only about 2 inches long, poison dart frogs are widely considered to be the most poisonous animals on the planet. Their poison secretes from under their skin and it contains enough to kill 10 men in a single hit and there's no anti-venom for it. The Dolphin in 1994 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, a localized dolphin who was oddly well known for being particularly friendly to women attacked two male swimmers. Witnesses claimed the mammal seemed incredibly aggressive and butted into both men several times. Alarmingly, this caused severe hemorrhaging in one of them and he died soon after due to his injuries. They're cute creatures but extremely intelligent and are not to be ticked off.
it's one of those pictures. One of the pictures where you don't see it at first, right? This photo comes out of Wisconsin State University. It's from 2012 and it was taken by Aaron Silva. What looks like just an abandoned hallway, if you look very close to the back left, you'll see it. The outline of a person who had been watching him from around the corner. For context, this was a very common tradition at this school. A lot of people would dare each other to go inside the abandoned infirmary that was just off campus. You go inside using just a flashlight and whoever stays in the longest eventually wins. But Aaron was never going to make it out. After more than an hour had passed, his friends eventually became concerned and they go in looking for him where they found him and described him as cut from the mouth down to the center of his chest. This was a hugely disturbing case for police, but they eventually do retrieve his phone and they zero in on this picture, a picture which they believe shows who might have done this to Aaron. And if you increase the brightness, you can see the outline even better. Imagine running into a stranger in the middle of the woods. They then inject you with a paralytic agent, aka paralysis, and you now have 20 minutes to not only escape the forest and this cereal on a liver, but before your body shuts down. I was scrolling through Netflix the other day and I saw a movie called Don't Move and I said, huh, this looks pretty interesting. Now, yes, it is your typical chase horror movie where you don't really know the killer too much, but you know just enough. And I'm not gonna lie, for a Netflix solo movie, I thought it was pretty good. One of the reasons that I loved it so much was we haven't seen a serial on a liver use something like paralysis in a very long time, especially in a decently budgeted horror movie. Now, the craziest part is you get to see every step in every evolution of the paralysis taking over your body. First it starts with your hands, then it goes to your legs, then your whole body shuts down to the point of where you can't move. You can't even move your neck. And we actually see the dose is so big that you can't even speak. Now all in all, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this is the greatest Netflix horror movie of all time, but I will tell you it was a pretty fun watch. The acting in the movie was pretty good, the storyline and plot was pretty good, and like I said, it is your typical chase horror movie. But we do see a good portion of the unaliver as well. And like I said, for a Netflix horror movie, the way this movie ends, it's pretty crazy. All I can say is that this movie was a pretty good time, and if you have Netflix, it's worth a watch. Like and follow for more. This 14-year-old boy essayed his 83-year-old neighbor. Viewer's discretion is strongly advised. On August 29th of 2018, 14-year-old Tyrone Harvin told his 83-year-old neighbor, Dorothy May Neal, that he would help her with some chores inside of her apartment. Before walking into her apartment, he made sure to grab a handful of condoms. Tyrone did help Dorothy with some chores before attacking her with a lamp. After that, Tyrone essayed her, he fled her apartment, and he left her seriously injured on the floor and naked. Neighbors had asked police to do a welfare check on Dorothy since they hadn't seen her around for a couple of days. When officers showed up at her apartment, they noticed dried blood on her doorknob, and that's when they saw Dorothy lying naked on the floor. She was then taken to the University of Maryland Hospital Trauma Unit and unfortunately passed away that next day. When officers were at Dorothy's home, they noticed that there was several condom wrappers around her body as well as used condoms. A broken bloodied lamp was also found by officers. Dorothy's autopsy revealed that she suffered extensive trauma to her head and genitals. There was DNA on Dorothy's body and in those condoms and that DNA matched up to Tyrone. Despite all of the evidence, Tyrone's mom stood by his side and truly believed that he would never do something like this. On June 29th of 2022, Tyrone was convicted on first degree murder, first degree SA, and use of a deadly weapon. Tyrone was also sentenced to life in prison. Controversial banned cartoons that were actually made part two. Pope Town is a British adult animated sitcom that managed to produce a total of 10 episodes with everything in it from sexual jokes, corruption, and greed without ever being screened by the BBC who commissioned it. Roman Catholics in the Catholic Church immediately protested it, causing not one episode, but the entire series to be banned worldwide, also resulting in several fines. One Beer was an episode of Tiny Toons in 19 1991 that shows the Toons finding a beer and drinking it. The underage Toons Buster, Plucky, and Hampton then get wasted, steal a car, and start driving around. The episode then ends with them driving off a cliff only to hit the ground and die. Yes, this was a real episode that was made, and yes, if you look for it, it's available online and clips are available on YouTube. You're welcome. These people evolved to live on the ocean. The Bajau people found on the waters of Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines live their entire lives on houseboats. It's understood they've retained this lifestyle for around a thousand years. They spend most of the day diving into the ocean, hunting fish and other sea creatures. 
But here's where things get really interesting. They can hold their breath underwater for up to 13 minutes and dive as far down as 60 meters. Due to the pressure of the water that far down, some actually pierce their eardrums, which is actually really bad for them. Some of them go deaf. Now, the reason they're able to hold their breaths underwater for so long is because they evolved larger spleens in comparison to other humans, providing more oxygen to their blood. Their spleens tend to be at least 50% larger than ours. Isn't that interesting? What is the creepiest twist ending from a horror game? This is my new series where we talk about some horror game twist endings that you might have never heard of. And today's ending is from a game called Embuscade. Now of course, full spoilers ahead, but if you'd like to see this game for yourself, I have a full playthrough of it on my channel. The game starts with you playing as a homeless person in a dark and spooky alley. And we know this because of the sign asking for money right where you start the game. Unfortunately, times are extremely tough, and the game's singular mechanic is that you have to root through the trash to find food. As you walk through the empty town, though, you find a quarantine sign. Hmm, something's happened in this town, is that why it's so empty in these streets? And wait a minute, there's blood too? What exactly happened here? Then you find a zombie outbreak sign and it all makes sense. There must have been an outbreak and we're one of the last survivors. Just then you hear a little girl crying and you think maybe we can escape together. We chase after her, we find her, it's okay, we're gonna be fine, let's escape. And it's then the truth is revealed. You're not homeless, you've just already turned into a zombie. And after your snack, you join the rest of them on the streets. If you liked Terrifier 3, here's some more Christmas-themed horror movies. In misery, a famous writer is held captive by a crazy fan after a car crash. She locks him up and forces him to rewrite his latest novel. In Black Christmas, a group of sorority sisters receive disturbing phone calls from a killer over their winter break. Throughout the night, they are stalked and picked off one by one. In Frosty the Snowman, a group of children perform a ritual that brings a snowman to life. He unleashes a terrifying winter storm that threatens the lives of the children who summoned him. In Storm of the Century, a small town faces a crazy blizzard. A mysterious man shows up and demands a sacrifice in exchange for their survival. In the lodge, two kids get stuck in a snowy cabin with their dad's new girlfriend. As they spend time together, strange and creepy events unfold that make them question their sanity and the girlfriend's intentions. In the Grinch, a sinister creature stalks a nearby town, terrorizes the townspeople as he steals Christmas. Follow for more and let me know if you want a part two because I have many more movies. You won't believe the horrifying plot twist at the end of this story. So during the 1970s, a young couple living in Utah went on their first date. And the two of them were having a good time on this first date, but they could both tell that this wasn't really going anywhere between the two of them. It was pretty awkward between the two of them over the course of their dinner, but they decided to be friendly and just stick it out. It was getting to be pretty late at night, but right before the young couple left the restaurant to go their separate ways, the young man asked the young woman if she wanted to go on a late night hike with him in the Utah mountains. The young woman was kind of taken aback by him asking her to do this considering the date didn't go too well. But he explained to her that he had gone hiking in those same mountains many times before and that there was nothing to be worried about. 
And so the young woman decided to agree to go on this hike with her date because she thought, what the heck, maybe this will spice things up. However, when the young couple began their hike in the woods, the two of them felt very off about things. As the two of them went deeper into the forest, things began to feel very eerie around them. Both of their heartbeats began to rapidly speed up, and the two of them kind of both thought to themselves that maybe they should turn back around. But since it was their first date, neither of them wanted to be the one to speak up and say, hey, I think we should go back, so they kept on walking forward. At this point, it was basically completely black in the forest. And then suddenly, the two of them heard some movement coming from some nearby bushes. And it was right at this point when the man stepped on something soft and squishy that was very different from the rest of the trail. And it was right at this point where the two of them just felt like they should get out of there, so they both left. Ironically, this scary experience in the woods led the young couple to become closer, and eventually, a few years later, they got married. Ten years later, the married couple was making breakfast one morning while watching the news. And on the news this particular morning, they were interviewing a serial killer a couple days before he was sentenced to be put to death. And one of the questions that they asked him was if there was ever a time where he was almost caught years before he was actually caught by police. And surprisingly, the murderer said, well, yeah, there actually was this time where I was nearly caught in the woods. He went on to say that about 10 years ago, he was in the mountains of Utah trying to dispose one of his victims in the woods, when all of a sudden a young couple literally walked right into the crime scene. The killer said that the young man in the couple actually stepped on the body of his victim that he was trying to drag away into the woods. However, since it was so dark in the woods, the young couple couldn't really see their surroundings, so they just kind of turned around and left being spooked. The serial killer that the young couple unknowingly caught in the act was Ted Bundy. What would you do if you were offered $9 million, but you had to unalive your best friend? In 2019, 22-year-old Denali Bremer from Anchorage, Alaska had met a guy online named Tyler. Tyler was supposedly a millionaire from Kansas, and he fell madly in love with Denali after meeting her online. Tyler had promised Denali $9 million if she SA'd and unalived someone. If she were to videotape the crimes and send him photos of what happened, then the money would be hers. The two quickly formed a close bond and within months, they began their plans. The thing was, Tyler was lying about who he was. His name was actually Darren Showmiller and he wasn't a millionaire. He was just a regular guy living in Indiana. Denali had no idea that he wasn't who he said he was. Denali and Darren had exchanged numerous messages how this plan was going to work. Denali took no time to choose her best friend, 19-year-old Cynthia Hoffman. Denali had chose four of her closest friends, and if they were to help out with the plan, they would get some of the money, which included two juveniles who have not been named, and we have Caden and Caleb. On June 2nd of 2019, Cynthia had left her home to hang out with some friends. She failed to return home, so her father tried to report her as missing, but when he went to the police, they said that he had to wait at least 24 hours. Denali had called Cynthia's dad throughout the night, telling him how she hoped that Cynthia was okay, and since they were best friends, Cynthia's dad did not find this strange at all. A few days later, Cynthia's body was found in a river. She had suffered a gunshot wound in the back of her head. The police had investigated her death and put together details pretty quickly. Denali was then brought into the station for questioning. Denali had mentioned to investigators that all the friends were playing a game where they all duct tape each other. Cynthia was first in the game and she immediately knew it wasn't a game anymore when Denali had retrieved a gun and pointed it at her. That is when Caleb had grabbed the gun from Denali and shot Cynthia in the back of the head. Denali was excited what she had did to her best friend so she immediately called Darren and that's when she knew that she was tricked. Denali had led detectives to the others who had participated and they were arrested within a few days. In February of 2023, Denali had accepted a plea deal and will spend at least 30 years in prison. In August of 2023, Darren had pled guilty and he will be sentenced at a later date. As for Caleb, in November of 2023, he pled guilty to second degree murder and he is expected to be in jail for up to 75 years.